All right, wow, that was crazy exciting. Are you guys having fun? I'm having fun. This is great. Hey, kids, we love having you in here with us. And I got to be honest with you, it's not like every church service is like this exactly, but it is pretty fun to study God's word together. And that's actually one of my most favorite things to do. I have a lot of fun studying God's word, the Bible. And so that is what we're going to do right now. We are going to look at some verses in the Bible that inspire our theme today of glow. But before we do that, I actually need two people to help me on stage today. And there are some parameters here. You have to be willing to be up here on stage. So you've got to be brave, which I know a lot of you already were up here and brave. And you've got to be under the age of 12, okay? So if you want to be a helper up here, I need two. You have to be under the age of 12 and willing to come up here. You can stand up right now, and then I've just got to pick people. So stand where you are, okay? And, and you guys were already on stage. You did an awesome job. So I'm going to actually try to pick some people that maybe weren't on stage. I see a young lady right here. Would you come up here? You're one of them. Give her a hand. She's really brave. And then let's see, right over here. I see you right there. Yes, you got your hand up. Come on up here. Thank you. Give him a hand too. Wow, you guys are so brave. Okay, let's see. Is this thing working? Can you give us your name? Scarlett. Nice to meet you, Scarlett. And what is your name? Ian. Ian. So Scarlett and Ian are here. And I have a question for both of you. First of all, just thank you for being up here. You guys can come in a little closer here. I, I've got a question for you. Do you guys like presents? You do? Okay, I'm surprised. I thought you wouldn't care for presents, but you do like presents. Okay, girl. Well, I have a present for you, actually. All right, and they're, they're both the same thing, so it doesn't matter which one you get. What I need you to do is open this and show everyone what the present is, okay? So you can do that. There you go. Take that. Okay, what is it? Is that what you wanted? Do you know what that is? Those are super cool, aren't they? He has no idea what this is, and she loves these. So she even knows what to do with it. It's a tea turtle. You can put the bag down if you want. Go ahead and flip that inside out. Isn't that cool? Now, do you know what's really neat about these things? They glow. These are glow-in-the-dark tea turtles. It's the only one. Yes, these are the only glow-in-the-dark tea turtles, and they are yours now. You get to keep them. But first, yes, you do. First, I want to show you what they do. Do you know what my kids do as soon as they get a glow-in-the-dark toy for, like, Christmas or birthday? They, yeah, they, they turn off lights. They run into a dark room like a bathroom or a closet or something. They turn off the lights to see how bright does it glow. And we can do better than that right now. We're actually going to shine a flashlight on these to charge them up. And we're going to turn the lights down. And we're going to see how well they glow. Do you want to test these things? Let's see how they do, okay? All right, Ian, we're going to start with you over here. So go ahead and flip yours inside out. We're going to charge it up, okay? We're just going to shine this thing. I'm going to just going to hold it for a second because this is a super powerful flashlight. It's going to like give you a suntan if you get this on you. Yeah, this is the only flashlight that comes with safety glasses. So, and it's not even a joke. It's actually true. Can we turn the lights down and see if that thing will glow? Go ahead. Let me try yours, Scarlet. Does that glow? Is it glowing? You might have to turn it down real low. Let's see if we can charge it up. Does it actually glow? Does yours glow? Oh, yeah, there you go. It does. It works. Okay. Now, while you're admiring your toys, stay here for a second. I have a question to ask all of the kids out there, have you ever had a glow-in-the-dark toy? Okay, here's the question for you. I have two questions for you about glow-in-the-dark toys. Do glow-in-the-dark toys shine on their own? No, they don't shine on their own, do they? They have to be charged up by some light source, right? You can put them out in the sun. You can put them under a lamp. You can shine a flashlight like this on them, and then they will glow. Second question, do glow-in-the-dark toys glow forever? No, they fade eventually, right? And they glow less and less over time. So glow-in-the-dark toys, two things you need to remember. We'll actually put these on the screen for you. Glow-in-the-dark toys, they don't shine on their own, and they don't shine forever. And I want you to remember that, so I'm going to ask you to say it with me now. First of all, glow-in-the-dark toys don't, and they don't. You guys are awesome. A plus. Thank you guys for being up here. You can take those with you. You can take the bag with you if you want to. There you go. Thank you, Scarlett and Ian. Yeah, give them a hand for their bravery coming up here. You guys are awesome. Way to go. The reason I wanted to show you those glow-in-the-dark toys is because they're a lot like people who follow Jesus. God wants everyone who follows Jesus to be a light in the world. 
We might say a glow-in-the-dark Christian. That's what God wants his followers to be. Here's what Paul said to the church in Philippi. He said, do everything without complaining and arguing so that no one can criticize you. Live clean, innocent lives as children of God, shining like bright lights in a world full of crooked and perverse people. That world full of crooked and perverse people is a dark world. It's a dark place to be. And so, so he's saying, Paul is saying, I want you to shine like Christians that are bright in a dark world. We could call them glow-in-the-dark Christians. That's what God wants you to be, a glow-in-the-dark Christians. But there's something really interesting about Christians that's just like those glow-in-the-dark toys. And that is, Christians don't shine on their own, and they don't shine forever. They don't shine on their own, and they don't shine forever. Peter said in 1 Peter 2, you are coming to Christ, that's Jesus, who is the living cornerstone of God's temple. He was rejected by people, but he was chosen by God for great honor. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God for he, this is what's important, called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Now, what does that mean? The world can be a very dark place. People can be really mean. And there's lying and stealing and all sorts of bad things that people do. And God is calling you out of that dark world and into his wonderful light. See, he's the light source. Jesus is our light source. He's the one that can help you shine in the dark world, to glow in the dark as a Christian, because you can't do it on your own. When you give your life to Jesus, when you admit that you're not a good person on your own, And there's not enough good that you can do to be okay with God and that it's only Jesus that's good enough for you and you ask him to forgive you for your wrongs and to replace that with his good and to make you a part of his family, that's when you become a Christian who can then glow in the dark because you have a light source. Just like that flashlight was the light source for those toys, you have a light source that can charge you up and that is Jesus. He is the light. The good is not in us. The good is just a reflection of Jesus in us, and we have to remember that. So the first truth I want you to take away from today is that Jesus is our light source. Can everybody say that with me? Jesus is our light source. Now for the second thing, glow-in-the-dark things don't shine on their own, and they don't shine forever, right? And here's what Jesus said about the light. In John 8, he said, I am the light of the world, so Jesus is our light source, If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. If you what? If you follow me. I am the light of the world, Jesus says. He is the light source. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness. Because why? You will have the light that leads to life. So how do you get charged with the light source? You have to what? Follow Jesus. That's how you get charged with the light source. Now, I I wanna be clear about something here because when Jesus is talking about following him, he's not just talking about that time where you say, I trust in Jesus, I believe in him, I wanna be a part of his family, I, I admit that I'm a sinner and I can't do good enough on my own, I want Jesus to give me a new life and be part of God's family. That's a part of it, but that's not all there is to following Jesus because following Jesus means actually doing what he says. It means learning what he teaches about how to live. And living differently than everybody else. It means getting rid of hate and bitterness and and anger and jealousy and the nasty things that sometimes we do. Removing those from our lives and replacing them with kindness and love and mercy and goodness and forgiveness and all the wonderful things that God teaches us to do in his word, the Bible. But here's the thing. You can't do that on your own. You don't have that kind of good inside of you. You don't have that kind of glow, that light inside of you. It only comes from Jesus. You need Jesus to charge you up. And you know what? You won't shine forever unless you keep coming back to the light source. It's not enough to glow in this world to just say, I'm going to be a part of God's family. Jesus, save me. It's not enough to be a a glowing person ongoing to just do that once and then never come back to the light source. You have to recharge constantly. When Jesus was about to leave his disciples for the last time, he prayed to God the Father, and he asked a question of God the Father. He asked a request for his disciples. Here's what he said. I have given them your word. This is Jesus talking to God the Father. I have given them your word. That's God's teaching. And the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. And remember, the world is dark. 
The world is full of nastiness and, and sin and, and bad stuff. It's a dark place. But Jesus says, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Make them holy by your truth. Teach them your what? Word, which is truth. Just as you sent me into the world, I am sending them into the world. Here's the thing. The world is a dark place. And yet Jesus says, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. I know the world is dark. I know the world is crooked and perverse and full of bad things, but I'm not asking you to take them out. I'm asking you to protect them. I'm asking you to teach them. Teach them my word. Teach them how to live. And the way to keep doing that, the way to learn how to live, the way to recharge your glow is through God's word, which today we learn through what? The Bible. The Bible is God's word to us today. It's what we have passed down to us for a couple thousand years so that the teachings of Jesus and the teachings of God through his apostles and prophets comes to us so that we can learn how God wants us to live. And that's why the Bible is such a big deal to us because it's the, the source of truth that we can go back to again and again and learn. How does God want us to live in this world? How can we be lights in the world? How can we shine brightly in this world that it can be so dark sometimes? We learn how to do that from God's word. We learn that by studying God's word every day. We learn that by memorizing Bible verses. How many of you are in Awana and memorize Bible verses? Probably a good amount of you. We learn that by spending time talking with other people about God's word. All of those things help to recharge our glow. It helps us to follow Jesus as we live, to remember the way he wants us to live, to shine a light for Jesus everywhere we go with our friends, even if they don't act that way, even if sometimes they're mean to us. We still glow as lights if we're going back to the source, Jesus. It's not that that light can come from us. If it weren't for Jesus, we'd be in the darkness. But God calls us out of that darkness and into his wonderful light so that we can shine like bright lights in the dark world. So don't just read the Bible to get points or to check it off your list. Don't just read it because you feel guilty, like, oh, I should really read my Bible. Read it for a purpose. Read it with intention. Read it because you know this is doing something for me. This is doing something for my heart. This is recharging me to shine in this world. This is how I recharge so I can be a glow in the dark Christian. Now, I have a question for the teens and the adults in the room. Was that message really just for the kids? No. We all need a reminder of this. I needed this reminder this week to remember how important it is to go back to God's word again and again every single day so that I can be recharged. It's a different way of looking at your time in the Bible. So here's what I want you to do with me. If you are a teen or an adult or a kid, any age, and this is a reminder that you need from time to time, I'm gonna ask you to stand up with me right now. If you need this reminder from time to time to get back into God's word and recharge your glow, Stand up with me. And if you don't want to stand, that's fine. No one's expecting you to. You may not be able to. That's perfectly fine. But we're also going to sing some songs in a little bit. So this way you're already ready for that. I want to, I want to give you one more thought before we do that. I'm going to pray. We're going to sing a couple more songs. One more thought. I just want to be absolutely clear. I am not saying that living as a good person in this world and shining brightly in the world is what makes you a part of God's family. That's what happens when you believe in Jesus and say, I admit that I'm, I'm a sinful person. I do bad things. I don't want to do that anymore. Jesus, I need you to take away my sin. And you paid for that on the cross. And I want your, your perf perfectness to be in my life. And I want to be a part of your family. That makes you a part of God's family. But that then enables you to live as a glow-in-the-dark Christian, to shine brightly in the world. And so we don't shine in this world so that somehow we earn God's favor, so that somehow we can be with him. Any of that would just take away from the sacrifice of Jesus. Jesus. We shine in this world because of what he's already done for us. We shine in this world, not because there's any good naturally in us, but as a reflection of what Jesus has already done in us and what he continues to do through us as we go back to the light source and study his word and memorize it and learn it and talk about it and live it. So I hope that you are willing to do that with me this week. Let's go ahead and pray right now. If you'd bow your heads and close your eyes. Father, we thank you for what you teach us in the Bible about your goal for us. And sometimes it does feel like, man, maybe we shouldn't be in this world because it's really messed up and it's hard sometimes and people are mean and it's difficult. And yet, God, you say that you have chosen to leave us here for a purpose. So I pray that you would help every single one of us to see that purpose, to realize it, to grab hold of it and be willing to shine brightly as a light in this world. But then, Lord, help us to do the thing that's necessary so that we can even do that. Help us to be focused on your word, the Bible. 
Help us to make it a priority in our lives to go back to it again and again to recharge with that light source so that we can be a glow in the dark Christian. And God, we will thank you for all that you do through us as we shine to our friends, to our coworkers, to kids at school, everywhere we go, not because of the good that's in us, but because of the good that you bring to us. We thank you for it in advance, Jesus. And in your name we pray.